So good morning, everyone. I'm Christine Marie George, and I'm a faculty member at Johns Hopkins. Today, I'll be presenting on our work evaluating the use of WASH mobile health messages as a way to serve as nudges to promote hand washing with soap and water, safe drinking water and practices, so water treatment. Um, and this program is part of a larger um, health facility-based WASH intervention that can be delivered in cholera treatment centers. Um, the project is a collaboration between our research group at Johns Hopkins, as well as the International Center for Diarrheal Disease Research, Bangladesh, ICDDRB, and the Bangladesh Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Um, so I'll start by giving some background on the rationale behind our study. So when you see a cholera patient presenting at the hospital, as many of you are aware, the family members of the cholera patient are at 100 times higher risk of developing a cholera infection compared to the general population. And this is because they're often sharing the same contaminated environmental source, such as drinking water, and also through person-to-person -person transmission through poor hygiene practices in the home. And the literature indicates that it's really the one week period um, after the cholera patient presents that the family members are at highest risk of a subsequent cholera infection. However, despite this literature, there's been little work done to target this high risk population. And so this led to the development of the cholera hospital based intervention for seven days. And the acronym for the study is CHOBI7. Uh, CHOBI means photo in Bangla, and we use this term for the pictorial modules that are delivered as part of this intervention. It's delivered bedside um, to a cholera patient and their accompanying household members. Um, it promotes, uh, explains how cholera is transmitted and promotes hand washing with soap, water treatment, and safe water storage. And so the messages that are provided bedside to the patient are then reinforced through home visits. And in the home visits, we provide enabling technology, which includes the hand washing station. And this was study was done in Bangladesh. Um, and so this model was developed by the ICDDRB wash group um, and includes, let's see, there's a pointer here. Um, so it includes soapy water, which is a low cost alternative to bar soap that's made with water and detergent powder. Um, and we also provide a sealed water vessel and chlorine tablets. And so we conducted a randomized control trial of this intervention previously in DACA at DACA ICDRB Hospital. Um, and for those who are not aware, the hospital typically sees 100,000 diarrhea patients each year. Um, based on the surveillance they're doing, they estimate uh, last year about 11% were cholera. And so back in 2013, 2014, we conducted a randomized control trial of this approach where we compared it to the standard message given in Bangladesh on the use of oral rehydration solution at discharge uh, for diarrhea patients to Chobi 7 plus the standard message. Um, and we found that this intervention led to a significant reduction in symptomatic cholera and a 47% reduction in overall cholera infections. And so it showed that this approach um, was a promising standard of care for the household members of cholera patients who are typically a neglected population at a high risk of cholera. These findings were disseminated to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, and they were really interested in scaling Shobi 7 across Bangladesh. However, they wanted us to investigate scalable approaches, um, and in particular approaches that did not involve home visits. And so this came to our current work, which I'll present on today, which is using mobile health messages to serve as nudges to encourage these key wash behaviors after uh, cholera patients and their family members are discharged from the hospital. And so I'll go through our development of the, the Chobi 7 intervention. We conducted eight months of formative research. It included in-depth interviews, focus group discussions, a pilot, um, as well as workshops with government stakeholders. Um, and so now I'll describe our intervention module. Um, and so through our formative research, it emerged that a physician um, would be the ideal sender of messages once the patients were discharged. Um, and so we selected a character that's actually a physician. So this is um, a picture of the physician at the hospital. And we named her in character. So she became Dr. Chobi. Um, and in particular, she was called Dr. Chobi Appa, and Appa means sister um, in Bangla. And so she was the sender of the voice and text messages that we sent. 
Um, and so here I'll quickly go through some example messages where Dr. Shobi calls and reminds people that they should make soapy water um, in the key times that they should make it. Um, we also included peer role models, and so there was a character named Aklima, and she was a cholera patient that also came to the hospital, and so Dr. Chobi has discussions with her where she encourages her um, to practice the key behavior and asks her questions, um, and then congratulates her for giving correct responses. Um, because it's a mobile health intervention, and in Bangladesh, typically, the males in the household have ownership of the phone, um, we found that it was important to also have messages that targeted the male household members. And so we included Aklima's husband. Um, and so Dr. Chobi would call um, in the voice messages that households receive um, and talk to Aklima's husband. And he explains how his family is now safe from cholera since they've been practicing these key wash behaviors. And so this gives you a sense of the type of messages that were sent out. And so based on our formative research findings, we send out messages over a 12-month period, um, both voice and text using the VMO platform. We sent out more frequent messages during the first week. Um, there were two messages, and then after that, we would send one message every two weeks. Um, and so today I'll describe the findings from our randomized control trial of this intervention approach. And so in terms of the health facility-based delivery of Chobi 7, we use a very similar approach as we did in our previous randomized control trial. A health worker delivers a pictorial module. We added in the pictorial module a section on the mobile health. Um, so we showed a photo of Dr. Chobi um, in the flipbook and said that she would be calling you and texting you um, about these key wash practices. Um, we provide a facilitating hardware. Uh, we researched the uh, lower cost materials and were able to bring the cost down of the hygiene kits to around five US dollars. Um, and we also provided cue to action cards to adhere to these key behaviors. <coughs> and so for our randomized control trial of this uh, more scalable approach of Chobi 7 delivery, we had three arms. We had one arm that received, again, the standard message given in Bangladesh on the use of oral rehydration solution. Um, we had an arm that had health facility delivery of the intervention plus the mobile health messages. And then we had an arm that had the same intervention plus two home visits. And I should also say the reason why we send the messages out for 12 months is because we not only want to target this one week high risk period, but our ultimate goal is sustain the wash practices over time. And so this is a timeline for our study activities. Uh, we had six time points where we followed up on our behavioral outcomes. And I should also mention that this is part of our larger trial that's ongoing. Um, and we collected both stool samples as well as clinical surveillance data. And we're blinded to the clinical outcomes now, but at the end of the trial in April, we'll be able to report on those. So the impact of the intervention on cholera, um, as well as diarrheal diseases within these households. Um, and so for our behavioral outcomes, we had two main ones, which I'll focus on today. We did five-hour structured observation of hand washing with soap practices at stool and food-related events. And we also did unannounced spot checks, where we collected a sample of household drinking water and tested it for E. coli. And so for today's presentation, since the trial is ongoing, I'll focus on our findings from the seven-day high-risk period, um, as well as our nine-month follow-up. And so now I'll go into our results. Um, and I'm happy to share the presentation um, and to go into more detail about our study findings. And so during the one week high risk period, we saw compared to the standard message arm, we observed significantly higher hand washing with soap in both of our arms. And importantly, the arm that just had health facility delivery plus our mobile health intervention. When we looked at household drinking water quality relative to the World Health Organization cutoff of less than one colony forming unit, we also saw um, large increases um, in households um, that had water samples that met the standard. And again, this is stored drinking water going from 8% in the standard message arm up to 51% and 68% in our intervention arms. Then when we went to our nine month follow up, um, we also saw significantly higher hand washing with soap. Um, so this is a measure of sustained behavior change. So it's showing the intervention led to sustained increases in hand washing with soap. 
um, practices. When looking at drinking water quality, we had more mixed success. And I should mention that the chlorine tablets were only given for a one week um, period. So after that, households were encouraged to boil and safely store their water. And so when we looked at the nine month follow up, we did not observe a significant increase relative to um, improvement in terms of the WHO guideline of less than one colony forming unit, which is all the way here at the bottom. However, when you look at the top in red, when we look at the very high risk category, which is greater than 100, um, greater than 1,000 colony forming units, we observe a significant reduction um, in the intervention households compared to the standard message arm that are in this category. So when we look at the high risk category, it's 28% in the standard arm, and this drops down to 13 and 17%. Um, and this reduction was statistically significant. So in summary, we found that this um, more scalable approach to delivering the Chobe 7 intervention led to um, significant improvements in hand washing with soap and sort of drinking water quality, not only during the one week high risk period, but also going into our nine month follow up. Um, and importantly, we saw that delivery of the intervention in the health facility accompanied by mobile health with no home visits um, still led to these significant improvements. Um, and so the government was really excited to see these findings and is interested in scaling this approach um, in the community clinics across the country. Um, and so in conclusion, this is an approach that could really be promising to use in cholera treatment centers in areas where you have high phone coverage um, as a tool to reinforce the, the WASH messaging that's provided. And so that concludes my presentation today. I would like to acknowledge all of our research collaborators, particularly at ICDDRB, as well as the Bangladesh Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for their support with the implementation of this project. And to open the floor for questions. Thank you.